I demand the dignity of being viewed as an individual rather than as some ambassador for blackness, some ambassador for my phenotypic traits and characteristics. There's there's something obscene about that fiction. Beef is not what Jay said the nods. Beef is when the working folks can't find jobs. When the crack babies can't find balls because they end up on box. You know, what was funny though is when I was watching that real time clip. Mm. Host of the fifth column podcast, Camille Foster is over here. Great to see you both. And then you would talk about like how much of a blowback you got. I realized what a bubble maybe I operate in because all the wild shit you were saying, including complimenting your own physical handsomeness, <laughs> didn't strike me as odd at all. I was like, yeah, that, like, that all just seems totally normal to me. Well, you know what the crime in that appearance was? When I actually go back and look at the number of police-involved shootings or deaths in custody, for example, and the numbers simply do not bear out this genocide against black America, it's not a thing. What we the do crime is, we is, is and this is funny because this is what they say, the crime is existing. Like being a person who looks a particular way and doesn't have the orthodox perspectives like is the crime. It doesn't actually matter what I said. In many instances, they have no idea what I said, doesn't except matter. it's the wrong thing. It's unacceptable, we disagree, and that offends me. It, it's the strangest thing about that was getting notes from people that say things like, I'm ashamed. What, what are you ashamed for? What did you do? <laughs> My perspectives have nothing to do with you. I certainly didn't get them from you. <laughs> and I don't even know who you are. So for you to, you know, not just send me a direct message, but like write a message on Instagram on a picture of my daughter about how Yo, much bro, contempt you I, have bro, for me. I know when you said that shit. When is Ibram X. Kendi coming on the fifth column? This will almost certainly never happen. Ibram Kendi, uh, like a number of people from that universe, I've never seen him do a confrontational interview. I've never seen him do an interview with anyone who seems remotely likely to ask him an even subtly or, or sarcastically skeptical question. He's getting like uh, private grade schools in West LA to pay him fifty thousand dollars for yeah. forty-five minute Zoom calls. Have, you, like, seen, have you seen? Have you seen any sorry, footage like, oh, of those God. calls? Have you seen any of the footage? Uh, no, I, I, I've got I, one. I could send you one. It's the, it's the people just insisting that you think that two plus two equals five. People, like, people just telling you over and over again, this dude is a moral genius. <laughs> or like Robin D'Angelo, it's like, this woman has profound insights into yeah. the nature of black-white relationships. Mm -hmm. And then I, unlike the vast majority of people that use their names as a cudgel on social media, go and read their books, uh -huh. or, like watch their lectures. Put aside like whether or not they're grifters or whether or not they're kind of preying upon white shame, they're just like, mediocrities mm -hmm. and then over and over and over again from every organ of elite opinion being told no 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 these people these are geniuses right here mm -hmm. it's precisely what you would expect to happen in a universe where your your ideas are never confronted and you never That's actually have to articulate a counter argument so you just keep deploying the same thing and you say ridiculous things like any disparities that exist between blacks and whites when it comes to economics or anything else can be explained by racism to the extent there are social outcomes, societal outcomes that are unequal between these two racial groups, it is obviously racism. And the fact that disparities not only exist between whites and other racial groups that in some instances are not in the favor of whites or that there are disparities within yeah. the, the whole universe of blackness, the various kinds of black people, um, those disparities don't matter apparently. They, they don't compute. It's, right. it's just, again, it's an absurd claim that can't be justified, but it is among the most fundamental of the claims that he makes, and he makes them repeatedly. And the thing that ought to happen that hasn't happened yet is when he's doing one of these major media appearances, just to ask him a basic question about that. See How if he has an answer, and he doesn't. And it's certainly the case that there is a particular sort of prescribed set of beliefs that good people are supposed yeah. to yeah. have now. And amongst those things now is kind of the regime of like equity based beliefs and notions of, you know, racial structural racism right, and right, racial right. justice right, and right. the the horrible position of the, the black man in America and the fact that only white people changing in some way can actually save the black person in America or yeah. the system is so fundamentally yeah, corrupted yeah, yeah, it yeah. needs to be destroyed and rebuilt. Um, <laughs> I'm also though, as you mentioned it, I'm thinking about the degree to which conversations about like racial justice are focused on these like middle class and upper class like elites who in many instances find themselves getting elevated 
above the position that they're currently in, <laughs> that they're like massively overpaid or very well paid, let's just say, yeah. job in a tech company or some Wall Street company, where now they need to be like the partner or CEO, just so we get the diversity um, percentages correct. Like how that helps someone, again, in a desperately poor community who has been overlooked for generations and has been systematically disadvantaged, I am not exactly sure. But I don't see how it's helpful for the people with genuine need to be bundled in with people who are effectively getting you know, further boosted up the ladder because there is apparently some sort of racial diversity quota that needs to be hit within some elite organization. It's not just that it's detached. Mm -hmm. It's that these highfalutin, intersectional, woke, whatever theories that were kind of were birthed in the academy mm -hmm. are actually being operationalized. Mm -hmm. They're informing actual concrete public policy. Kind of. In places like Minneapolis. Like things like Angela Davis birthing the notion of abolishing the police in the 70s mm -hmm. has absolutely informed the defund the police movement, uh -huh. which has in turn directly affected the the budget allocation for the police force in mm -hmm. Minneapolis. But isn't the Minneapolis which, police force now on like a hiring binge, allocating well, money to so, go okay. look to so, hire people? So when but we, I'm saying but, last summer, but last summer, yeah. they, they cut the budget yeah. by several million dollars. Mm -hmm. And what did we witness? We Them witnessed, increasing the budget by an equivalent no, no, amount this year in order they, to find new they, cops. They, they, <laughs> right. They did it because right. there was a historic surge. In violent crime. In violent crime. Yeah we get to watch the operationalizing mm -hmm. of these kind of woke fantasies of tenured academics mm -hmm. that directly lead to the desecration of black bodies. The Minneapolis City Council with basically is exclusively staffed mm -hmm. by Bernie Sanders enthusiasts. <laughs> Even they eventually had to capitulate uh -huh. to this push for like law and order mm -hmm. because the people that were asking for more cops on the street right. all had black and brown faces. Uh -huh. right? So eventually it's like, you can only deny reality for so long. You can only insist that two plus two equals five for so long. Uh -huh. Well, this is one of my one of my chief challenges with people who believe that we're like on the precipice of, of a woke apocalypse, that suddenly the entirety of the United States is about to turn <laughs> into this horrible dystopia yeah, yeah, yeah. where, you know, all of the fantasies of the Black Lives Matter movement are about to be instituted in, a, in okay. American foreign policy. and. <laughs> The fact that most of the executive orders have something to do with equity is something that we should really take very seriously. It isn't obvious, obvious to me yet that jobs created and saved, cash for clunkers, and equity are not kind of creatures from the same dangerous swamp. What do you mean? In the what sense that it's a catchphrase and it's popular and it may or may not have great impact. It might be that by inculcating all of these federal agencies with these equity mandates, yeah. you get stat juking the way you would expect to yeah, with like a police yeah. department that's gaming things. Suddenly there's a surge in the number of like people with yeah. alternative lifestyles <laughs> who happen to be white because yeah. that's another way to tick the box and get your diversity quota met. What's important is the material benefits to individuals, the questions about tangible outcomes, not bullshit outcomes about yeah. phony notions of yeah. diversity and absurd notions of yeah. identity. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that is, a, is a genuine question to me. And I, there's something about people trying to sort of formalize and codify like, these, these ideologies and turn them into classroom curriculums that isn't terribly disconcerting to me primarily because I know that schools do a bad job of teaching kids all kinds of important things. Right. <laughs> like I'm not certain that most high school students could tell me what the three branches of government are. Yeah. I don't know that most Americans yeah. can tell me who their Congress so you're not worried are. about woke indoctrination because you're like it's the wrong, <laughs> It's again, it's the wrong problem to focus on, right? It's, like, it's not that this doesn't matter. It's not that it doesn't matter that some percentage of learned Americans believe that the United States of America is the apogee of human evil yeah. and that no country practiced slavery before the Americans did and that only black people in America have ever been enslaved. The fact that you believe some version of that is bad for you because it isn't true. But I don't think it's the most fundamental problem facing the country. And I do worry about um, bright people who are concerned about the right kinds of things becoming overly concerned about that. with that. It, it becomes agree. a kind of conspiracy theory of its own.
I would love to talk about things like school choice. I'd love to talk about destroying the public school system. Yo. We haven't done anything different in education in years until the pandemic. And I think if we have to restructure things, it'd be great if we were thinking about this is, how to completely yeah. reshape America's education system. This is very titillating to me. The foundational structure of what we consider education to be, this kind of factory model sure. of the God teacher lecturing right. to like the supplicant students. Yeah, yeah. Right? And if I think about my kids, I guess... I had an extremely hard time in my 20s just like figuring out what I wanted to do professionally because all I'd been trained to do was uh, please adults mm -hmm. and do homework assignments. Mm -hmm. One of the schools that was the major recruiting ground for the Varsity Blues scandal uh -huh. high, was my high school. Is that right? In West Los Angeles. Huh. Right. It's like the real scandal isn't the people that paid $100,000 to this dude to pretend like their 17 year old was a water polo star so they could go to Yale. <laughs> yeah. It's all, it's basically all the other ways that elites kind of jerry rig the system in order to get their kids into these schools. Right. And what college has become to them, which is, it's like definitely not about enhancing your mind. It's not about imbuing you with like a liberal arts education yeah. sensibility. Yeah, yeah. All school trains you to do at that level is to get into the next prestigious institution. Uh huh mostly produces people that then go into institutions that maximize their prestige and provide questionable value to the economy. Maybe it's a questionable value to like the human species generally. Mm -hmm. Like there is a scandalous amount of elite cognitive talent that goes into law consulting. Yeah. That like I should basically be like a, an aspiring partner at McKinsey and Company right now mm -hmm. who like charges natural gas companies in Oklahoma City $800 an hour mm -hmm. about how to make their management structure more efficient. We can, if we like, go back and oversimplify the past and pretend that all of the benefits of you know, slavery and historic injustice accrued to white people universally and the disadvantages and awfulness of it accrued to black people uniquely. That isn't how it worked. Like slavery wounded the entire country. Like low income Southern whites were profoundly disadvantaged by the institution of slavery. The entirety of the South its development was retarded, both as a consequence of the institution of slavery and the horrible, pernicious reconstruction era that followed after it. In many real senses, the whole of the country is still suffering, suffering under the burden of all of the racial animus that was created. And even this horrible backlash that I think, again, is very regressive with respect to people believing that the way to remedy past racial injustices is to amplify and double down on racial injustice by reversing the polarity of the, the awfulness that we do to people when we codify them as a member of one racial group or another and give them advantage or disadvantage on the basis of their race. I don't think that makes sense any more than it makes sense to say, oh, you know, you broke your leg in a car accident. Let's get you in some sort of reverse car accident to fix that broken leg and, and help you. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Okay, so let me, let, me, let me present the best counter argument to what you just said. Give, give me the counter Specifically argument. Specifically as a way of it. inducing you to, which is, okay, fine. These racial categories are clearly bullshit. Mm -hmm. right? They're entirely socially artifice. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of structures in the society of America in particular mm -hmm. that were based upon those artifices, right? So even if they are fake in a biological sense and like uh -huh. an essential sense, yeah. they're not fake in a social sense. Sure, there right? are tangible things associated with race. There are outcomes right. that seem to correlate with race pretty tightly so, in ways that seem to suggest that there's something systemic about it all the same. Even if that's no, true, the notion of it becoming an identity, the notion of it becoming something that we willingly inhabit, that we insist on inhabiting, and we insist on other people inhabiting, that we infuse into all of these various okay, areas you, of okay. the culture and society, I think that is a very different thing. The, the, the fact that we're, we're creating a black news network because we need a black lens on the news in order to understand the world, it's an absurdity.
And I don't think it helps kids to believe that, oh wow, I'm a part of Camille's excellence. It's absurd because you kind of look like me. It's wrong. Do something remarkable. You can be remarkable and your pedigree doesn't matter. And your racial composition is completely irrelevant to that fact. I, my excellence is mine. It belongs to me. And I don't appreciate you taking it away from me. <laughs> Right? Beef is not what Jay said to Nas. Beef is when the working folks can't find jobs. When the crack babies can't find moms, cause they in a pine box. I lock behind bars.